Hello and welcome in. This is Liana from wanderingermany.com, your Germany travel planning expert. Today we're going to be circling back to a major topic of confusion, questions, and eh, sometimes excitement, but also sometimes frustration, and that is traveling by train in Germany. So if you're just jumping in and you skipped the podcast on trains versus cars that we did earlier, and you're still trying to figure out if you should rent a car in Germany or take the trains, then you'll actually want to go back and listen to that podcast first. However, if you are here because you already know that you want to take the trains in Germany, but now are totally overwhelmed with how to actually do that, then you're in the right place. So today's podcast is specifically going to be about what to expect from train travel in Germany. So we're going to understand some of the basics, like the different types of trains in Germany, because that's actually going to influence what tickets you need to get. And I'll also be discussing some general helpful tips for buying your tickets, and I'll walk you through what a train journey in Germany may be like. You'll need to know how to find your platforms, what apps you'll need, and so much more. Now, what I'm not going to cover in this podcast is actually all the different types of tickets for Germany rail travel. Unfortunately, this is a topic in and of itself, and it is so in-depth. And the reality is it's actually highly personalized to each person's exact itineraries and their trip. And if we added that on to today's chat, we would be here for a while. However, I do know that this is typically the next step, at least the next step in confusion for people when they're planning their train trips in Germany. So I might have another entire podcast just on figuring out the specific train tickets in and of themselves. Like, I don't know. Maybe I could even do something where people like send in their itineraries. I can go over some examples of train ticket options for them. I, I don't know. If that's something that you'd like, I guess, I don't know, leave me a comment or you can even just email me and maybe we can work on that for a future podcast. All right. So before we get into it, if you're here listening, I'm assuming that you're planning an amazing trip to Germany and as an expat living in Germany for the last 10 years myself, I've got all the insider tips and information to help you plan your trip stress-free. So be sure you subscribe to the podcast. And if you haven't yet, I've got loads of content, itineraries, off the beaten path ideas, and obviously more on the blog wanderingermany.com. All right, so let's deep dive into train travel in Germany. Now, if I sound a little bit wishy-washy on my feelings about taking the trains in Germany, honestly, it's because I kind of feel a bit, I don't know if bitter is the right word towards Deutsche Bahn. Now, if you don't know, Deutsche Bahn is the national train system, and that's who runs the majority of regional and long distance trains and routes here in Germany. And honestly, I kind of feel like, I don't know, like it was my good friend and that I've recently kind of been stabbed in the back by her, but I still want to be friends with her. And so like, I still want to recommend it, but I also feel like it kind of betrayed me. So <laughs> if I sound like, oh, I love Deutsche Bahn. And then like my next comment is like Deutsche Bahn, just know like I'm going through my own struggles. <laughs> All right, so here's the deal. I always used to tell my readers that train travel in Germany is great. And, you know, while I still mostly believe that, the trains in Germany have actually been getting more and more difficult. I've especially found that to be true really in recent years. Now, a lot of Germans will say it's been happening forever, but for me, as somebody who doesn't even have public transportation where I'm from, like anything was really great when I first moved to Germany. But especially post-COVID, I have found that Deutsche Bahn is just getting worse and worse. And unfortunately, they're not living up to the expectations that they have set. So I think it's really important to understand the current situation with trains in Germany so that, you know, if things go great on your trip, then hurrah. <laughs> but if not, then you'll at least have been kind of mentally prepared and you'll at least have an idea of like what to possibly expect. And, you know, since you're hanging out with me, you'll at least know how to navigate any situations that might pop up. So, you know, your trip isn't going to be absolutely ruined. All right. So <laughs> like I said, truth be told, I actually really do love taking the trains in Germany still. You know, I can get to most places. Yeah, sometimes it can take a little bit longer or it has more connections. But for the most part, you can get to some pretty, you know, off the beaten path locations, even just with public transportation and with trains alone. I also love taking the trains because, you know, I'm 100% comfortable driving in Germany now. I've lived here for 10 years. I drive all the time. But if I am going to like a bigger city, if I can get there by train, that's honestly what I still choose. Just because driving in the bigger cities can be stressful, 
even as somebody who's used to driving in Germany. And honestly, no matter where I'm going, if I can avoid parking in Germany, I will. I actually think that parking is harder than driving in Germany. And I don't mean like the actual act of parking, but I mean like finding a parking location or fitting my car into like a teeny tiny spot or paying for the garages or knowing if I need a ticket to put in my windshield. It's like just a whole thing. And if I can avoid it, I usually do. But also if, and we'll get more into this in a little minute, but if the trains are on time and if you've got a seat, then train travel in Germany is honestly really lovely. You know, you can sit back, you can watch the beautiful countryside. And in true German fashion, you can even grab a beer and just sit back and relax. And also, depending on a large amount of variables, it can actually still be pretty affordable depending on what ticket you get or when you buy it. And we'll get into more of that later, though. But when things go wrong with the trains, yeah, like they can go wrong. And as a traveler, possibly even on a tight schedule, having a delayed or even canceled train can really put a damper on your trip and leave you scrambling. And I think knowing that is a possibility even sometimes helps travelers kind of navigate those situations if and when they come up, because at least they're not completely thrown through. I mean, they're probably still going to be thrown through a loop because they have to figure out what to do next. But at least having the idea that's a possibility can sometimes help people as opposed to going and being like, I thought the trains were perfect, which they're not. Because here's the thing. Deutsche Bahn is, get ready for this, 28.8 billion euros in debt. Billion. 28 billion euros in debt. So yeah, like they're struggling. And between this and honestly, from what I've experienced with Deutsche Bahn post-COVID, the trains in Germany are extremely far from the, you know, quote unquote, efficient and punctual stereotypes that Germany as a nation is often known for. In fact, more and more locals are getting increasingly frustrated. And honestly, like something has to be done here because the trains in Germany used to be known as this great option for travel and it's just going downhill. In fact, in 2022, Deutsche Bahn itself reported that one third of its trains were late within that year. Now, granted, I have to kind of laugh because we're talking German terms here. So quote unquote late by their own definition, Deutsche Bahn's own definition is only six minutes or later. So there's not a lot of wiggle room. Like to me, if I show up I'm always late to anything. So like for me personally, if I show up five minutes late, I'm actually like super on time. <laughs> but to Germans, a minute is too late. So for them to say, you know, six minutes or later, that's what they give themselves for, you know, their statistics of quote unquote lateness. Now, granted, I will admit when I am on Deutsche Bahn trains that are late, we're not just talking six minutes. <laughs> I mean, we could be 10, 15 minutes late. I've also been on trains that are over an hour late. So it really is a wide variable. But know that when they say, oh, so many Deutsche Bahn trains are late, like you literally could be talking eight minutes. Now, sometimes eight minutes is all you have for a transfer. So that that can be the difference between making your next train and completely missing it. But for the most part, you know, if you're late for five minutes, six minutes, eight minutes, it's not a huge deal. So basically all I'm saying is like, take that statistic and take everybody who's saying like, oh, Deutsche Bahn, it's always so late. Like take that with a grain of salt, because I still think that train travel definitely has its place in Germany still. And if you're only using that as your main method of transportation, you just need to know that you need to go into it with a little bit of flexibility, some pretty realistic expectations. And, you know, when you go into it with those things, then usually your trip can be pretty good. All right. So with all of that out of the way, we need to move on and we need to actually start talking about the trains themselves. Now, because I don't want to confuse you too much. <laughs> I'm just going to break down the two main categories of trains. And actually understanding the difference is pretty vital when it comes to routing your tickets and purchasing your tickets. So even if this information sounds a little bit like, oh, I don't need this, I promise you will when it comes to actually being on bond.com and knowing what to book. So to break it down into pretty simple terms today, we're going to talk about the long distance trains and the regional trains. Now, there are other ones, but most of the time they're actually going to fall into one of those two categories. And for beginners, this is actually just kind of where we need to start. So ICE trains, it looks like the word ICE. These are your long distance and high speed trains. So 
ICE stands for Intercity Express. And these are the trains that are super high speed. Like we're talking, you know, 300 kilometers an hour. And they're going to connect your bigger cities together. They're going to have stops, but not a lot. So they're going to be fast. They're going to be boom. Now, there are a couple of like versions of high speed trains, if you will. Like, so for example, there is also just the IC train. So no E, which is literally still just intercity, but not the express. So ICE, Intercity Express versus IC, just Intercity. Now, this is still going to be a long distance train and it's still going to be pretty fast, but it's not going to be like that super fast, super high speed train. But you're still going to get between cities, like long distance cities, and you're still going to get there relatively pretty quickly. However, these ones do make a couple extra stops, which is why they don't go as fast as the ICE trains, because the ICE trains only make you know, a handful of stops, which means that they can get that speed up and go where the IC trains, sometimes they're on the exact same routes as the ICE, but they'll make more stops. And so these are great for like commuters and things like that. And then the other kind of main train is the regional trains in Germany. And these are ones that say RE or maybe RB. So again, like you'll know it's the long distance or high speed because it says like I or ICE, IC, where regional, it's going to usually start with an R for regional, obviously. And these trains run just, like I said, in the local region or even the state. So these are not high speed, but they're still going to be decently fast. And as far as getting you from one destination to the next, they're really good, actually. But they're only going to stay within their region. And one of the great reasons to use regional trains is because there's usually a regional ticket, which is often much cheaper than the ICE trains because it's specific to that one region but it does take longer to use and get to the destinations you want. So for example, since I live here in Bavaria, I use the Bayern Pass all the time, which is an entire day pass, but it's only good for regional trains because it's a regional pass. So for example, there are ICE trains that run between Munich and Nuremberg, and both Nuremberg and Munich are in Bavaria. So this is where sometimes it gets confusing to travelers because they're like, well, I'm still traveling only within Bavaria. However, because you are only on that regional pass, you can only get on regional trains. Okay, so if that sounded very confusing, I'm sorry. I think that's why I just kind of want to do an entire other episode on specific tickets, especially you know, to route you because sometimes you can combine like ICE tickets from like one destination to the next. But like if you're staying in Bavaria, you can use the regional tickets to get around and it's a lot cheaper. So I think I might just, like I said, just do a whole other podcast on that and actually flesh out those details and give you exact examples so that you kind of have a better idea of, you know, why you would use an ICE train versus why you would use a regional train and what are the rules of using one versus the other. And I don't know if that sounds like something that you need more help on, I guess just like leave me a comment and that'll definitely help me decide if I should just make a whole other podcast on that topic. Now I said there was only two kinds of trains, but I mean, that's kind of a lie. Like I said, there's other ones that kind of fall within those, but There is also local public transportation, which includes U-Bahns, which are like subways or S-Bahns, which are kind of like an U-Bahn, but it can also go above ground too, (laughs) and buses and trams. But like for today's purpose, we don't need to worry about that because you really don't need to figure those parts out until you're actually planning out the activities of the city you're visiting. And you can get those day of. Today, we just want to talk about like the main trains, how to travel on them, how to book those, et cetera. Okay, so let's talk about buying the train tickets in Germany. So the reason why I wanted to go over the types of trains first is because this is actually pretty important when it comes time to purchase your tickets. It's going to make things much easier to figure out as you're looking at all your options. All right, so speaking of buying your train tickets, this is my first public service announcement of today (laughs) in our podcast. Usually like I go off on tangents about like global warming or like things like that. But here's my public service announcement today. So if you're Googling or reading anything on the internet about train travel in Germany, and it's like a blog, let's say, not mine, shame on you. No, I'm kidding. It's okay. I understand that you're going to look at multiple resources. But if you're reading somebody else's website or blog, and if they are suggesting that you use a third party booking system. So for example, one that I see a lot in like, I'm just going to say it like the number two position on Google right now, they're suggesting Omnio 
or Trainline, which are train booking systems and platforms. They're third party. Yeah, they're just trying to get your money through your affiliate sale. <laughs> so if you are traveling just within Germany, there is zero reason why you should book with any other platform other than directly with Deutsche Bahn itself. Now, I will give a caveat, and that's if you're planning a specific route, like one route that involves more than just Germany. And I do just mean like that one route. And if you're doing that, then yes, I will admit that the national train companies, like Deutsche Bahn or the OBB in Austria. I forget what the one in Italy is called, but these are all like the national train companies and they're not great with like booking multi-countries for some reason. I don't know why. And if that's the case, then I actually do suggest Omnio. So like last year, I booked a train ticket from Germany to Rome last year with my sister and I used Omnio because it crossed multiple countries. And for whatever reason, yes, that platform is better for booking that kind of journey. But if you're just booking within Germany, so you're just booking a, you know, ICE train from Frankfurt to Munich or, you know, Munich to Berlin, or if you're just buying a regional pass like the Bayern pass, or you're just getting local tickets, I think you see where I'm going with this. You just need Deutsche Bahn. And if you see anybody suggesting otherwise, they're just trying to get your affiliate money from that link. <laughs> So all you need is the Deutsche Bahn website, and that is called bahn.com. Okay, so let's assume that you are going to take my advice. Then let's go ahead and walk through buying a train ticket for Germany. So I'm, <laughs> I'm going to kind of show my millennialness here for a second, but I still like planning everything out on my computer when actually planning things. So like people literally get anxiety when they see my computer because I have no less than a million tabs up. But when I do that, like I can quickly compare multiple pages and screens, you know, easily. I can go back and forth and I can make plans and my routes and all that stuff. So I like to plan on bond.com on my computer. However, once I know the routes and once I know like what I want to book or what tickets I'm actually going to get, then I actually suggest moving over to the Deutsche Bahn app. So <laughs> for as inefficient as Deutsche Bahn is getting a bad reputation for, their app is actually pretty fantastic, especially if you know, you're going to have access to data or Wi-Fi on your trip then the Deutsche Bahn app is a must. And if you are planning on just taking trains in Germany, then having a data plan is almost going to be essential just so that you can you know, stay up to date on any delays, notifications, knowing what platforms to be on, anything like that. So just go ahead and find the app. It's called DB Navigator. A lot of people get confused on this. So like if you type in like Deutsche Bahn, you might see a lot of different apps because... Deutsche Bahn has a couple of different like local apps and things like that. But if you type in DB Navigator, it should be your first one. And all you need to do is you can sign up for an account really easily and really quick. You'll put your credit card information in and you're pretty much set to go. Now, once you have that app set up, you can really easily buy tickets. So you can buy them on the fly. You can buy them ahead of time. It stores your tickets all within the app. And perhaps what I like most is that it gives you real time updates and notifications to your routes when you're actually traveling. So for example, I just went to Berlin and it would tell me things like, you need off the train in 10 minutes. Or like I'd get a little notification and it would say, your scheduled ICE train is now delayed four minutes. And like two minutes later, it'd say, your scheduled ICE train is now delayed six minutes. Yeah, I was really delayed on my Berlin trip. <laughs> but at least it kept me notified. <laughs> so it'll also say things like your train is delayed, but your connection should still be caught, which is nice because if I don't know that train station very well, you know, maybe four minutes of a transfer is enough time to get to the next platform. And if it says like, you should be able to catch this, then, you know, I know maybe I should run. <laughs> or if it says like, yeah, or there's times where it'll be like, yeah, you're not getting on that train. Obviously it doesn't say it in that tone of voice, but when I see like, oh, you probably aren't gonna catch this connection, I know not to like push and shove off the train and like start running where instead I can just be like, eh, okay, I guess I'm gonna have to figure this out next. The other thing that's nice about this app is, you know, it's obviously going to tell you all the logistics. So 
obviously like the time of the train, what platform to be on. Sometimes it'll even tell you for like ICE trains where they're really long. If you have a reservation, which you'll want one and we'll get to that in a minute, but it'll tell you exactly which section of the platform to be on. So what I really like most about this app is that it just takes a lot of the guesswork out of traveling by train, especially if you're new to trains or new to Germany. It just it really helps kind of hold your hand through the train process, even when things aren't going well. All right. So when you're ready to actually purchase the ticket, it's really easy within the app. You just go into it and you put in your destination and your origin. And depending on what you're looking for, there's also all sorts of filters if you want or need them. So, you know, you can put in the exact date, the number of passengers. You can filter it just to the regional trains if you wanted that regional pass that I was talking about earlier. So basically, it's a really surprisingly easy to navigate app that is pretty straightforward. And and it's in English. Like you don't have to sit there translating things, which is always helpful when planning a trip in Germany. So assuming that you've done all that, then you know you buy your train ticket and it just saves your train ticket and as a QR code right in the app. That's all you have to do when the ticket checker walks through the cabins. You just have to show them that QR code in your app and you're good to go. Now, one thing that I get a lot of questions on is Let's say you've figured out what single journey you want to buy. And let's say it is going to be an ICE or IC train. You're going to probably see that there is a SPA or flex price ticket. And this often has a lot of confusion around it. So the way that the train tickets in Germany work is no matter what, you're always going to put your origin and your destination in. And these will never change. So you'll always have to have your ticket from where you want to start to where you want to end. And that isn't really very adaptable. So what the Spar versus flex price tickets are is it allows for flexibility in your timing rather than in your destination. So you'll pay a little bit more with the flex prices, but by doing that, you know, you're still going to choose your route, but then you can really get on at any time during that day. There's even some flex tickets that are even allow for a day before and a day after for flexibility, where the Spar tickets usually lock you in to one train that specific time and that's it. Now, these flex tickets are usually really handy for people who, you know, either just don't really know what they want to do that day or, you know, for example, if that's the day that you're flying in and you don't want to risk having your flight be delayed and missing that train, if you get the flex ticket, even if your flight is delayed and you didn't get on that first ICE train that you thought you needed or wanted, you can just get on a later one and your ticket is still valid. Okay, so I know most of this is sounding pretty straightforward so far, but a lot of people still get caught up in a lot of the details of actually booking things. And these are still really important. So I kind of want to do this next section of the podcast in more of like a frequently asked questions sort of style. And I'm going to cover a couple of those oftenly misunderstood parts of booking trains in Germany. So first question, a lot of people ask, when should you buy your train tickets? When's the best time to buy train tickets? When's the best time for prices to buy train tickets? Well, first of all, it's going to depend on the train ticket that you buy. So for example, if you're getting a regional pass, like I said, like that Bayern ticket that I mentioned earlier, you can literally get that the day of because you don't need seats. You can get on any regional train at any time during that day with that ticket. However, if you are taking an ICE train, so remember, Remember, that's your long distance trains, those high speed trains. You are going to want to book as far in advance as possible. Which brings me to question number two. Leanna, I'm trying to book a train ticket and it's not showing any trains. Help, what's going on? Well, most likely this is because you can't even book the train tickets three months out. So Deutsche Bahn releases the schedules for the train tickets, typically about 90 days out. So if you're searching before this, it's not even going to show your options. However, if booking an ICE train, you'll often find some of the best prices, the earlier, the better. So if you can try to find that 90 days out window and book as close to that as you can. With that being said, there are sometimes last minute deals, but honestly, I don't see that very often. For me, the best times to book really are those three months out. All right. The next question is, do I need to buy a seat reservation? Actually, sometimes this isn't even more of a question. It's more of a panic of like, 
oh my gosh, how do I get a seat reservation? And usually the people that are panicking about this are the people who are looking at the regional train tickets. So again, if you booked a ticket that says RE or RB, those are the regional trains. And you literally can't buy a seat reservation. It's not even possible. They don't offer seat reservations for regional trains. You literally get on the train and you find an open seat and that's where you sit. Most of the time there are going to be seats open unless it's like Oktoberfest and the trains are super packed or it's like a commuting time at five o'clock and on a Friday kind of thing. But for the most part, you can usually find seats on the regional trains and you can't buy a seat reservation even if you wanted to. However, for the ICE trains, for any long distance train, Yes, you absolutely are going to want to buy a seat reservation. So this is a little confusing because some people, they're actually two different tickets. You're going to buy your train ticket and then you're going to buy a seat reservation ticket. There are two different tickets and they don't just come together, which is just, I don't know. Let's talk about issues with Deutsche Bahn. I don't know why they just don't include this with ICE trains. So a seat reservation is only like four extra euros. So I don't know why they can't just kind of do a blanket increase in tickets and just have seat reservations included, but they don't. So yes, you do need a seat reservation. And here's why. So many people will get onto an ICE train and there are no seats. And that literally leaves you standing in a hallway or standing next to the bathroom with your luggage for as long as that train is. Now, if you're only going an hour, maybe that's not the end of the world. However, you know, when I travel on ICE trains, I'm on there for four, five, six hours, and there's no way I want to just be standing or sitting in a hallway for that amount of time. So yes, you do need seat reservations. Now, can you wing it and hope for the best and hope that you find a seat? Sure. But I only recommend that if like you're a solo traveler and you're still willing to know that you might just have to end up standing anyways. However, if you are traveling with a family or even just another person and you're going to be traveling on that ICE for more than just, you know, a short amount of time, it's often booked out and it is hard to find an open seat. So if you don't want to be standing, then yes, book that seat reservation. It's really easy after you book, usually in the app, when you're booking that ICE train, it actually asks like, do you want a seat reservation? And you just say yes. And then it books it, which I guess actually I jumped ahead of myself, brings me to my next frequently asked question. How do I buy seat reservations? So again, if you are on a regional train, you can't buy seat reservations. However, if you are on a long distance train, when you're in the app, when you go to buy that ticket, you literally just usually will have an option to click. Like it's usually like a check mark of, do you want to buy reservations? Now, if this is kind of getting off on a tangent, but if you bought like a Eurail pass, those don't automatically come with seat reservations. And if that's the case, you can go onto your app and there's literally a button, like a little, literally like a drop down section in the Deutsche Bahn app that says like seat reservations only. And it's that simple. And now the nice other thing about seat reservations is not only are you guaranteed an actual seat on the train, but you can actually also decide what kind of cabin or seat you want. So this is, you know, when people complain about train travel in Germany, one of the things that I really love about train travel in Germany is it's different options of train travel, even within the same car. Now, I know that's a little bit confusing, but just follow me. So when you go to book seat reservations, for me, now that I have kids, I love, I can, especially if I can get it at that three months out, I'll book a family car. So there's specific sections in the train that are designated for families. And sometimes it's just a wagon. And basically it's like, hey, if you're in this wagon, know that there's going to be families and probably screaming children. So deal with it, which is nice for us parents who don't always want to have to worry about keeping our kids super quiet. Sometimes it's actually like full compartments where they're like these little, for lack of better words, like little like six person rooms and, you know, they have stroller sections and things like that. So that's really great. Or for the people who like really don't want children or don't want noise, period, there's literally wagons that are called quiet trains. And these are trains where you're not allowed to be on a phone. You're not allowed to talk. <laughs> it's silent, <laughs> which is actually really great. When I travel without my kids, like when I'm traveling for work, 
I actually secretly enjoy going to these ones because I'm like, oh, quiet. It's so nice. But there's also things like the restaurant car that you can book close to if you know you want to grab food on the car and things like that. So there's different types of reservations and they're all included in that different seat reservation. So you can just pick and choose what kind of wagon you want to be in, which is really nice. So again, let's go on to our next question, but kind of extend the reservation topic. So a lot of people ask, what's the difference between first and second class? So on regional trains, nothing. Don't even bother buying a first class ticket. Now for first class trains on ICE trains, I still would argue that they're not really necessary or even worth it. A lot of times you get that seat reservation included in that ticket. Again, sometimes, not always. You just want to double check that. I think you get like a newspaper. I think you also might get a snack or something like that. But it's really not enough for me to personally make buying a first class ticket worth it. Now, if you're going through a major transportation hub, like let's say you're going through Berlin, they do have Deutsche Bahn lounges in some major train stations where, you know, you can go in, you can get a drink, you can get some food. But again, to me, they're just not quite worth it. These lounges aren't like airport lounges where they're, you know, super nice, have a ton of options. So for me, booking second class, quote unquote, normal tickets on any train is more than enough. All right, speaking of food, another really common question is, can I bring food and drink onto the train or is there food available on the train? And the answer to the both of those is yes. So whenever I go on a train, I don't care if it's a 20 minute train ride or like a six hour train ride, I have this weird habit of, okay, I'm gonna go get a pretzel and like a beer before hopping on the train. And you know, you can get all of these at the train stations. So You know, stop in at any of these little kiosks and get some snacks. You're absolutely allowed to have food and drink, including beer, on the trains. But if you don't want to buy it yourself beforehand or if you're running late, on the long distance trains, there's usually a restaurant car. And I do try to avoid that. It is more expensive, in my opinion, and the food isn't amazing, but it is an option. And, you know, especially if I need a coffee or something like that, it is there if you need it. All right. And then the last frequently asked question I want to touch on is going back to this whole concept of delayed or even God forbid canceled trains. So, all right, Leanna, what happens if my train is delayed or canceled? Well, the first thing is like, don't panic. (laughs) The nice thing about Deutsche Bahn and the train travel in Germany is despite its many delays, is that there's also tons of trains. And rarely, if you miss one, are you going to be completely screwed. Now, it might really throw things off, but chances are within the next hour or two, you're going to be able to piece something together. And it might take effort to piece it together, but it's still going to work out. So the thing is, if you are on a long distance train, so again, like the ICE, the IC train, if your train was delayed and you missed your connection, or God forbid it was canceled, then you can literally get on any train. So it doesn't matter the train, you can get on it and you just show them your original ticket and you explain my original train was delayed and I missed my connection or my original train was canceled. So now I'm here. Now, the biggest downside to this is if you had a seat reservation, you now lose that, which can really suck. Because like, for example, when we were on this last train to Berlin, I had my entire family with me plus my parents. So we had seven people with us and we missed our connection because our first trains were so delayed. And that meant we lost our seat reservations. And as we were frantically looking at the Deutsche Bahn app, it was saying it's completely booked. There's no reservations available. And I was worried that we were going to have to sit on the floor or stand in the hallway for six hours with my toddler and two children and my becoming elderly parents. So that's always a risk and a really big downside. And there's not much you can do about that when you lose your seat reservation. Luckily for us, we were able to find seats. So like crisis averted. (laughs) However, just know that if a train is delayed, it's not like a flight where you're totally screwed. You know, you can get on that next train, you can find a train in a little bit and still get to your destination. 
All right. So I think I've answered a lot of questions that a lot of people have when trying to book their tickets online or on the app or trying to figure out Deutsche Bahn. So the last thing I want to do really quickly is kind of wrap it up with what to expect when you actually are ready to take your train journey. So the first few things you want to do is kind of know some of the jargon and lingo. So for example, train station in Germany is called the Bahnhof. The main train station is called the Hauptbahnhof. And the other probably important German word you are going to want to know is the word Gleis, which just simply means platform. So the nice thing about train travel is it's not like taking flights. You don't need to show up super early. There's no security, but you still want to allow for a little bit of time to navigate yourself around, find the right platform, you know, maybe get yourself some of those snacks and beers and get to your train in time. When I'm going to a big Hauptbahnhof, I usually like to try to get there at least 20 minutes ahead of time. That just kind of allows me some flexibility when I'm at the train station to find my way, know exactly where I need to go and just feel confident that I'm good. Now, when you are at the train station, sometimes it's a little hard to find exactly where you need to go. So the first thing you need to do is you need to look at your ticket and you need to see what platform, again, it might be called Gleis. It might be like abbreviated as GL on a board, for example. And that's going to be your first helpful clue. So it should say, you know, Gleis 2, Gleis for whatever. And that is just kind of where you should head to begin with. And that's a good indicator of where you should start looking. However, just because the ticket says one thing, I always recommend checking a board or, you know, something at the train station to just double check that it says the same platform. Now, this is where a lot of people will get a little bit confused. They'll look at this board, you know, and it's kind of like an arrivals board at an airport. It's this huge screen and it has tons of trains. It has all all these numbers and they're like, oh, I'm going to Regensburg. That's where I live. So I'm just going to use this as an example. I'm going to Regensburg, but I don't see Regensburg anywhere on this list. Where is my train? Well, the thing is they only usually post the destination. So if Munich is actually the final destination on the route from Nuremberg to Munich, but Regensburg is a stop in between. It's not going to just list Regensburg. It's going to list Munich. So the first thing you need to do is you need to know what train number you're looking for and the destination. So those two things are going to tell you what to look for on the board. And once you find that, then it'll tell you what track you should be at. The great thing about German trains is everything is usually very well marked, very well signposted. So once you get to the track, usually there's still a, a sign up above or something like that says what trains are even coming to that specific platform. So you can just double, triple check to really feel confident that you're at the right place at the right time. The other thing you can do is when you're walking on the platforms, if you can see the front of the train itself, it will usually have the number and the final destination. So you can confirm that's the right train. And there's usually going to be that same number and same destination name on the side of it as well. And honestly, when all else fails, just start asking around whoever's on the platform, even if it's not a train conductor or a Deutsche Bahn worker, even if it's just another person. And even if you don't speak German, Germans are actually really nice and really helpful. So if you're really nervous and you don't know if you're at the right place, literally just say the destination you're going to and add a question mark to the end and like shrug your shoulders really dramatically. So if I don't know that this is the right train to Regensburg, I just might be like, Regensburg? Question mark? <laughs> like, I wish you could see me right now. I know this isn't a video, but I literally took my hands and like dragged my shoulders really big, even just talking in the podcast right now. <laughs> so just do that. And, you know, somebody will tell you yes or no or point you in the right direction. And when all else fails, Germans are really helpful. Okay. So that's a lot of information to digest today. But hopefully, if you're planning on taking the trains in Germany, I'm hoping that this helped you a little bit to get an idea of what to expect and how to move forward in planning your actual train trips in Germany. And while I have a ton of guides on specific train tickets on the blog, like the Year Rail Pass or the Bayern Pass and so many more, I don't know, the more that I think about it, I do think I am going to do a follow-up podcast and, you know, help you guys figure out the best tickets. So I'll kind of break down different ticket options and that way you guys can kind of figure out which one is best for your trip. But I do have guides and step-by-step -step directions, for example, how to buy ICE or Bayern Pass tickets on the blog. So you can always go there next if you still need some more guidance for now. And as always, if you have any questions at all about traveling in Germany, you can 
always connect with me on Facebook at Wander in Germany. You can go to our Travel in Bavaria Facebook group, or you can always email me at Leanna at WanderInGermany.com. And until next time, bis zum nächsten Mal. Tschüss.